everybody, Adam Ant here. I wanted to give you a demo on the Navstar system. The Navstar system is what we use for facilitating town invasions, but it could also be used for guiding the wildebeest across the plains of the Serengeti. The, the, it doesn't have to involve aggressive mobiles it can be it can be any mobiles but typically we'll use it for um, for invasion type scenarios so we wrote this system back in 2005 and uh, it, it really wasn't seer friendly so I've recently rewrote it in its entirety to make it um, a lot easier to use um, and so let's just jump in and take a look at it. The first part of this video, um, I'll cut to the chase really quickly for seers that just want to get up and going with it. And then I'll get into a little bit more detail and why um, this system uh, works far better than, than other navigation systems like waypoints and uh, setting the home location of the creature. Um, okay, so let's first look and see what it, it what it looks like. Okay, so we're at the Cove Orc Fort, and our objective here is to invade the town of Cove, which is a couple of screens away here, uh, north of us. And when you have an invasion, distribution of the mobiles is is key. Um, if you were to use something like waypoints, um, everybody would be traveling in a single file line, which is which is ugly, um, and it, it's it's also got some other problems. But it, it, you have to link them together, um, and if the link becomes broken, then the, the whole chain is down. So this this system actually um, replaces that. It's not that waypoints aren't useful. Waypoints are great if you've got, say, a guard traveling between, you know, two points as he guards some area. But when you have something like an invasion, you really want a distribution of the invading mobs. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and, and spawn this. Um, this is a, is a is the field in our champ spawner and it's the nav destination and you set it up you just give it a name cove orcs that is you know it's dynamic you can just call it whatever you want um, and we're going to look for the distribution and how the how the mobiles move to their destination if it looks realistic if it looks you know if it looks bad, okay? So let's start it, take a look. Actually, we're gonna clear, clear the monsters, okay. Hey, okay, let's go. All right, so they're spawning. Okay, so immediately you'll see they're not all converging on the same on the same point. They're all just kind of meandering towards their destination, which is exactly what we want. And you'll see these things. Um, it's a navigation beacon. It tells us this is Cove Orcs. This is Ring One. And now we're over here to ring five and we actually have no choice when crossing this passage here but single file but they will they will handle it without a problem in fact they actually navigate it a little bit better than me I usually end up bumping into things here and then what we're going to want to see now is them start to fan out a little bit Yep, they're doing just that. And I'll explain how that works in, in, a, in a little bit in the follow-on. But I wanted you guys to see. Okay, I'm going to hide. 
I'm going to hide hidden. This means that I can only see what players will see. So all the navigation beacons are gone. So let's go over here and see what's happening. Ah, we've got we've got cannoneers up on the wall shooting the, the orcs here. That's fun. So the orcs know to go to a certain place within the town. So they're all all headed there. And uh, okay, so so that's that's what the, the 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 distribution looks like. It's it's pretty smooth, pretty nice. Um, so let's take a really simple example now. Let's go to to Green Acres and just set up a spawner and give it a nav destination and see how easy that is. All right, we're in Green Acres now. So let's add a spawner. All right, got a spawner. Put a mong bed on there. You've all done this, right? Okay. Now we've got a mong bed. So now let's configure it so that it uses the Navstar system. All right. So we're going to go over here to the nav destination currently it's just a regular spawner there is no nav destination so we're going to give it one and this is one of the neat features of this system is you dynamically define the destinations right you don't need to have them coded ahead of time and have a, a destination beacon of any sort so let's just call this mongbat all right all right, so now he belongs to the to the Mongbat um, event or invasion. Um, so let's go ahead and now give him a, a a path to follow. All right, so we do that. It's pretty easy. Um, We'll turn off the spawner so we have control of what we're going to see. So the thing we do is we drop beacons, all right? And we, we specify the name of the, the, the beacon event or the event for the beacon. And then we specify the ring number. <clears throat> so rings, you think of them as concentric circles around the uh, around the spawner right so these are the rings that the mobile will travel to all right so we'll call this ring one we'll call it ring five um, by giving them by skipping numbers you're able then to inject rings dynamically and change the profile of the distribution okay so we're gonna we'll drop one here dropped it at my feet so you can see that this is a nav beacon for Mongbat, ring five. Put one here, ring five. Put one here. Put one here. Okay, we'll travel over here. Go to 10. Drop beacon 10. Now I'm intentionally doing this very simple um, just for, for demonstration purposes. All right, let's do 15 now. And we'll have one, one here. Okay, so We've we've dropped our beacons. Now you may be wondering why do you need 
so many of these. Well, if we only had one, our mobiles would tend to look more like they're following a waypoint, right? So the way the nav star system works is the system will select one from the lowest order ring, one from the next order ring, so that would be five, this would be 10, so it would pick one from five, one from 10, so it might pick this one and, and this one. The next mobile will pick maybe this one and, and this one. So that's how we get our distribution, right? All right, so let's, let's try this. Let's respawn our mobile here. Let's tell him to go. All right, so he's, he's selected, apparently, this one, ring five. All right, he's at ring 10, going over this way, ring 15. Now he's heading towards the final destination. And he's there, and now this is his new home. So you may have noticed, well, he didn't go exactly to the beacon. That's intentional. They only need to get close. Um, this, again, helps with the distribution. Uh, all the mobs don't, can, if you had 10, if you had 100 mobs and, you know, seven of them all have the same beacon, um, you don't want them all to collide at that beacon. You want them to get somewhat close and then break off and then go to the next beacon. Okay, so let's go and just try a bigger number. Uh, okay, we're going to set the count to 10. All right, let's see what it looks like. All right. So there we go. They're all they're all they all got their their orders and they're you know marching forward. You'll notice they're singling up here because the 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 destination here is one beacon. In your town invasion, you won't want one beacon. You'll want like six or whatever. So they they they, they stay spread out at the end. Um, we can actually do that. As a matter of fact, I think that looks that looks much better. Total respawn, let's see what happens. And they're at their destination. Okay, so that's it. Um, The things to remember here are that waypoints are are okay for you know a single a single creature and you want them to move you know systematically between two points. Navstar is really designed for multiple creatures and uh, many creatures and um, ideal for invasions or just uh, journeys. I mean, you could have all your bankers in Britain, you know, pack up at three o'clock and, you know, go take a coffee break, you know, over at the, the, the guild hall or whatever. Um, so, so that's the basics. Um, easy to use, uh, easy to set up um, and uh, yeah, pretty efficient. So now I'll just talk a few minutes. That that's the short story. I'll just talk a few minutes about the some of the underlying mechanics. Um, one of the things about just setting a mobile's home to be some destination you would like them to go, or using waypoints, 
they still rely on the basic movement AI, which means they can get trapped very, fairly easily. And they'll bump into things and change directions and try again. And a lot of retries and they're bumbling along. Um, Navstar is built on a system that we built around the same time, around 2005. And we basically compile the map into something we call sector nodes. So each sector, which is 16 by 16 tiles, we create a graph of all the walkable paths. And then we connect all those together <coughs> for the sector node graph. So when these mobiles are moving, we have a pre-compiled database of valid uh, movement locations, so they never bump into a tree or you know walk into an alley that they can't get out of, um, and it's very fast because remember we're not calculating this path dynamically; we already know it. Um, so uh, it to generate the to compile the map mm, takes about five or six minutes, and we just do it once if we ever change maps. So. Uh, in Angel Island 6, we upgraded our map to a more recent map, so we re regenerated our, our, our sector nodes. But then after that, it's just a, a binary file that we, we load up on, uh, on server startup. And then when we're moving with Navstar, we're able to just, it's just a quick uh, lookup in, in a table. And we can find out if, you know, where the next place to move is to reach our goal. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, maybe one day I'll talk more about the uh, about the sector node algorithm, but it's really just a bunch of math and, and not really uh, video material. I really here wanted to present this so that seers and game masters can set up spawners or champ spawners and uh, and create some really interesting scenarios. Okay. That's it. Bye.